Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 34 of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. And uh, we welcome uh, Venkat, Nishant, and Kumaran to this this uh, Saturday session. We do it, uh, try to do it every once uh, in two weeks. And so far, uh, I think we've been doing it for uh, consistently for nearly one year. I think we don't, we haven't missed any alternate Saturday for so far. And I think uh, that's, a, that's a great thing. And I hope all of you are subscribing to our channel. And uh, I've been told that if you cl click on that bell button on YouTube, you'll get notifications from us. But that's up to you. You want to subscribe on YouTube, but if you have a podcast application, you subscribe there. That is the best way to listen to us because we don't really edit anything here. We just let the conversation happen and, and hope you enjoy listening to this conversation uh, while you're doing something else maybe. So, uh, so that's, that's, that's why we don't edit it. Uh, we want to feel like at home where you can skip some parts of the conversation where you're interested in not, right? So welcome everyone. And uh, the, the topic which we are discussing today is how does learning happen in the enterprise? Uh, what are the different different ways of uh, uh, how people retain stuff or what is important for the organization? How, how do they do it, right? And, and uh, starting with you, Kumar, what, what do you think in your own experience? You want to share experience or give advice? I think it's, uh, yeah. So I, for me, learning is very important. I think I would say uh, probably it's, uh, my purpose of my life itself and what tiny magic itself exists right as a organization and i think the key difference is we do not consider as tiny magic and me personally we don't consider learning as an additional activity there's that as a core of existence of a team organization individual and uh, we and one of the gold standards in measuring learning is kirkpatrick's model you can look it up so the first level is uh, the first level of learning is something like uh, I have heard about this concept. Okay, somebody says I heard about it. I heard about it. That's it. Okay. Second is they say you know what I can understand it. Third, third one you can they can say you know I can connect it to my uh, context. The fourth level, level four, is considered the highest level of learning where I have been able to apply what I have learned. Now. So learning is not just one. It's not just one stage. I've learned means no. So there are four stages. So the highest level of measuring learning is you have been able to apply it. Till then, you are at a lower level of learning. So at Tiny Magic and as an individual, I am deeply committed to level four learning. So this is one of the things which kind of becomes a little bit of challenging with certification because certification is at level two. Right? When you finish certification, it's at level two. And this year, I said that as a team, as an architect, I have to enable learning within the team. And for that, I guess uh, we just started off, like there's going to be a monthly rhythm call, which we call it as a green zone, which is not urgent, uh, but important kind of a thing where uh, each team member will pick up a concept which they will learn and then apply it. And what does applying mean? Either they come out with a working prototype or a working model, uh, preferably with our project. If not, it is okay. And uh, each team identifies something and uh, keep that thing going. So I kind of gave them a very simple goal, uh, including for myself is end of the year, I can at least say, I know 12 new concepts this year. It's, it's, it, it, it need not be a big software. It could be two new features or one extra library. But I know 12 things more than the last year. So that's my goal that every team member of mine should be able to say. I have five team members. So even if we get that right, as a team, we have learned 60 new technology components. right? And I think over a period of years, it has a compounding effect. So just started on it. Let's see how it goes. Venkat, what, what you, you were about to share something before we started recording. Uh, you were about to share something around how you, how you have uh, changed the, the learning inside your teams. Why, why don't you share something around that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Started their uh, team. So we also started a similar kind of uh, thing and uh, three months before in our team. So we we call it no uh, monthly knowledge sharing session. Uh, so where where we pick up our, uh, uh, two team members for that uh, month. So we can we can ask them to choose that topic and they can choose the topic whether it is in uh, the our own project or a new project. They have to come up with the like kind of presentation where uh, how they have applied it uh, so, so that our uh, all team members will know what they are working on it and uh, so it is it is kind of you no know, uh, all team members should know about the all the project so that uh, we can we can run out of resources if if someone is uh, like so it, it is kind of uh, uh, like a selfishness for the company actually but <laughs> it also helps the it also helps the all the team members to uh, to get the knowledge in all the projects i think so, there is one uh, very important thing uh, venkat there is something a concept called a learning organization okay so organizations okay. typically are not learning organizations they are only delivering organizations so a learning organization is one where the organization learns from its mistake and knowledge so if an individual learns something and he quits the organization is back to its old delivery level then it is not a learning organization but if a team member learns and the overall knowledge the organization can claim that you know our capacity to deliver has increased then it's a learning organization so actually it's not selfishness it is a basic necessity of a good organization or a good team so you are moving okay. towards a learning organization it's it's actually a known concept actually it's been there for two decades now the concept of learning okay. organization actually i mean i just okay. want to share something which Sat- satya nadella actually has has put from from microsoft right so what he said actually he, this is i think is this is in public domain uh, which is says we want to become from a know it all organization to learn it all organization right so this is taking on what kumaran just said of on uh, be, becoming a learning organization so that's that is uh, uh, means and and this is a very this has a very important influence on the employees because if it comes from the top level of the organization that we this is this is the philosophy we are targeting this has a very important impact on how individual uh, people within the organization actually start learning and and doing their work when could you want to say you were about to say something yeah actually it was quite interesting i uh, so there is a term called learning organization which i didn't know before so thanks for the kumaran and and uh, as yeah so initially we um, we thought that it it will help not only for the organization it will uh, help for the individuals yeah like because everyone is um, learn it from their um, colleagues experience and um, it it helps their build their knowledge right so yeah so i think the, also- i think probably we kind of missed this book recommendations i think uh, this learning organization is coined by peter singe who's one of the uh, i would say pioneers in uh, dynamic organizations and transformation even before the word transformation was used okay and uh, the book is called the fifth discipline i think that we could probably add i think that is the one of the first things which talks about this thing and it's yes it's like 1990 i think we have recommended we, we have recommended this we book recommended uh, about a year ago i think but this is still relevant oh, even very though very relevant yeah yes, i mean it's like yes. stellar work two year two, two decades ago literally 1990s when the research came out and i think people have very few have even got the concept of a learning organization yeah uh, yeah nishant you want to share something in in your uh, uh in your experience as to how how learning has ha- helped you or uh, what you think is is a good way for an organization to be learning and and you share your experience around that yeah the, the, the first and foremost thing is like uh, the continuous i think this continuous learning is uh, one of the success formula for for a 
for an individual or a person to be success in his area that is to be the clown of the classic example is elon musk because he is a continuous learner and that's the main reason why he always trying very diverse bit kind of things even though he didn't have any basics knowledge on that thing because and he he is acquiring all those things through his continuous learning on those things and coming back to this learning organization one thing actually personally i observe in in my experience is like when we have to consider this aspect learning organization there there one of the important as, uh, consideration is like assume if we have if 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 there is a product company and a service company in a product company what happens is like once we have a product in place and we have we are in a stage to adding functionality to the that product uh, and as, and if that if that uh, that product is mainly uh, driven by business not by the technology if it is a business driven product then the uh, general problem or the one pitfall that i notice is like the companies you know like this is the framework or these are things we have in place and what you guys or what all we have to do is like just adding functionality within that boundary and actually we are not creating an opportunity for learning new stuff so that we are restricting innovations because the the there the priority for the company is like adding new functionalities to that existing things and make that product uh, production make that product uh, uh, make it time to market as soon as possible because uh, that is their topmost priority and actually they are ignoring the innovation aspects aspects actually they are gaining through the learning so, so I, th- I think I, I think what you're saying nishant is is uh, maybe maybe it's an assumption because you, you may be right in terms of most organization try to do that because that is maximizing their investment uh, return on investment and they invest less in innovation and invest more in uh, making sure that we get the return whatever of what, whatever we have invested in the existing process and existing tools is that what you're trying to say correct correct Yeah, I'm saying from my experience. Okay, okay. Okay. So, so that's that which, which may be sir. which may be eighty yeah. percent of the organizations, which yeah. might be true. Actually, actually, Correct. that's very valid point. I think it's it's also that learning, right? It's it's also a mindset thing. Uh, I mean, a lot of things again comes back to mindset, right? I think it's two things. Um, one is that the blur or the line between a product organization and a service organization is blurring right like uh, product organizations are becoming like services as we go ahead so if you take office 365 is it a service or is it a product it's really can't uh, differentiate it that easily right and similarly when services companies are now using those services are they a product company or are they a services company because when a new feature comes in let's say o365 or in azure then it is only natural that your application should adopt that new feature so it kind of becomes tightly coupled right like a new feature comes in the cloud service it you expect it to bubble up into the application in the previous world till i upgraded my application from version 8 to 10 my 8 could still run and nobody will ask a question if any question comes we'll say when we upgrade to 10 we will take care of that but now because it's cloud okay if that new feature is up, is kind of released on that thing the services company also have to get that immediately right now that means there is a learning pull now learning is not an op it's kind of getting to a place where it's not an option anymore right i can't have somebody like skilled in sql server or sharepoint 2015 no there is nothing like that i need people to be continuously learning itself right so i think that learning is yeah. a kind of uh, i think it's getting to a point where they cannot consider learning as a option a strategy yeah, I, I... or something later it has to be thought in flight probably Correct. our previous topic right learning has to happen as the project is going it's not right. that i can have a separate uh, learning time a separate training program 
no all those things uh, kind of is going away so you see that uh, happening yeah so uh, actually recently i had a realization on this learning aspect uh, so what i did uh, coincidentally what i did is like uh, i just said this as one of the goal in the okr and assigned to all the members i have around 10 members reporting to me i have assigned this so what i did is i i i have selected the topics based on their skills based on their current experience as well as their competency i have selected the topics and assigned it to each and every so uh, basically what i what i am looking over there is like uh, as comrade said in the learning actually we have different levels for the first things like i heard this talk and second thing is like i can understand this so at least if we have to reach the second level what i thought is like individually if each person has to go and uh, understand each of this 10 technology would yeah. be difficult correct so rather going to uh, that line what i thought is like just give different topics to all the members and if they learn and enable the team to understand or enable the team uh, to get into that uh, technology or knowledge then it's a knowledge sharing and actually mutual benefits like all members in the team including me will get an understanding on all those 10 uh, technologies or 10 different concept concepts so that is basically a give and take policy one uh, one additional plusing on that uh, nishant is that um there's something called an ikea effect okay so basically when um, ikea you know right you make your own furniture right yeah. so let's say assemble your furniture you assemble, assemble your, your own furniture <laughs> because ma- making is too much yeah but that's the feeling the feeling yes. is you making your own furniture yeah. you make your own yeah. furniture right so let's say i buy a chair okay let's just take these two scenarios i buy a chair okay and i sit on it and when i sit on it a creaking sound comes okay now nishant you also get a chair but you get it from ikea and you assembled the chair both of us are sitting and it creaks okay now the probability that you will actually look at what to do to fix it should i put oil or should i change something you will be driven to do it more compared to me i will just complain the manufacturer okay. yes this is called the ikea effect so i could fix it but i will be more in a complaint mode than in a responsibility mode so in probably the next time you get to your team members let them pick the topic you probably give a broad area mm-hmm. okay and then say you decide what topic you want to pick it's just something in between you give a broad area like let's say db or let's say aws cognitive services or you can say uh, performance uh, db performance so and then you say within that you pick one topic so then you can bring in the ikea effect then that ownership other way you can kind of reduce the thing that i am leading it because nishant asked me to read yeah this is this comes back to our whole learning yeah. by force kind of uh, thing they they may learn something if they but they are not <laughs> but they may not enjoy it also yeah. but they yeah, might still learn come on if we think in a different way different perspective actually in a way actually i am trying to help to choose one topic ah yes. okay okay So, i think that's a that's a good idea so let let me bring it to a the opposite end of it is there something called as a learning overload <laughs> right so can you can you overlearn something or can you become bogged down by uh just the forced learning which you have to do there just because microsoft is changing everything and aws is changing everything you have to learn it it's it's so much headache because in fact this is actually one of the things because if you if you look at the how uh, microsoft has been releasing windows every 6 months right there is there is a uh, there's a feeling among some of the people is who are saying oh this is too frequent i have to now learn every 6 months i have to figure out where the configuration has has gone so administrators who are deploying windows they are starting to push back on that a little bit so so is there something called as a learning overload kumaran starting with you okay so i think uh, heard a joke from one of the uh, uh, teachers right so i think i i, uh, I think it's chinman and if i remember right so um, he said that 
uh, it doesn't matter how many times you go through Gita, right? Whatever holy book uh, mm-hmm. each one reads. Mm-hmm. What matters is how much of that goes inside you. How much of it goes through you rather than you going through the book. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I think if we are focused on how many books am I going through, how many topics am I going through, <clears throat> Um, I've come across a lot of very senior folks uh, who have pretty much read any book which you called, which is famous. Okay. And they spend a lot of time reading it. And their claim to fame is I read a book every week. Okay. But the challenge that I see is level four doesn't happen. They have specialized in being level two. They are specialists in level two. Right? Any new book, it releases two weeks, they'll be done with that book. And they can talk about that book. They understand it. Okay? And uh, any new concept it is given. So, if you kind of specialize, if your goal is to be specializing at level two, then I think you get into the trap of information overload because you want to know everything. Okay? But if you say that level two is there, but then I'm committed to going to level three and level four. How it changes is level four is you start getting the personal benefit of your learning. Then that gives you the energy to learn more. So energy consumes energy, right? So learning consumes energy, but when you kind of give output of that learning, that energy becomes a feedback to to learn more. So then you can avoid kind of or reduce that overload feeling. Otherwise, it's like you're feeding energy into the learning engine and the learning energy is just absorbing it, eating it happily. So then you feel an overload. But when you start applying it, the learning unit itself starts generating energy to give back to things. So then that you can get away from that overload scenario. But until if you go to level four, if you don't do it, then you can get into this overload scenario. Other Nishant, Nishant, overwhelmed with topics on, on, and learning. Yeah. yeah. Learning overload. My my point, my doubt is like when we say the learning overload, uh, this learning overload in a particular area or a particular topic, or it's a uh, in general, in general. general. As a tech as a person in tech. Yeah, usually what happens is like uh, if we have to build a cross-functional skills and which means we are as we are expertise in one area and we, we try to learn uh, basics on the other things then in the core area actually we try to learn more things or uh, because that is we, we, for example if we have to choose a database administrator this main focus will be always on the database administration kind of things and he tried to learn more things or we can say this learning all our things in that area and just touch the other areas to to place him as a cross person with a cross functional skills. So but basically if you're clear on what your core competency is in mm. which so or you can actually have it as in these areas I want to go to level four. In these areas Correct. I want to be at level three. In these areas I want to be at level two. If we do that clarification classification then we can avoid information overload actually there is there is a model there's a model called the t-shaped learning right the t-shaped learning i think you might have heard it much before yeah. also which is that you have breadth in uh significant areas but you have depth in one or two of the areas so it becomes a t so you have depth in some we have breadth in a large number of uh, topics so that that probably can sort of reduce the amount of learning you have to have in all areas I think uh, before Venkat comments, right? I think this is another thing. I think this becomes a little more challenge as you go higher up the organization because you don't know which one to pick as depth. Like, let's say you are a developer. It's a little easier. Like you can say DB admin, but then you become a team lead, right? You can't just be that. And then you become a uh, I think, higher and I higher. think there, there the learning uh, approach has to be different because when you at, at the leadership level, you are more responsible for depth in leadership rather than depth in in technology, right? And and leading uh, uh, leading technology itself requires some depth, right? Which is which is different skill or or an attribute compared to learning a specific technology. 
maybe we can have this topic another time which is how do you lead a technology organization and and how do you how to make impact yeah. without actually being expert Nishant, in, Nishant in specific a, comes from a eight month program with on technical <laughs> leadership <laughs> right right yeah. so so yeah. maybe we can we can talk about it we could talk so, about so venk yeah. i i want to take venk, it to venkat yeah. because he's a technology leader and yeah. and this is something which he faces every day uh, so uh, do, what do you think venkat this uh, learning overload or information overload actually you and uh, like no uh, arpan is and actually covered pretty much uh, everything here so i what i what i was about to uh, say was like so, something like where where you want to start or to learn and which uh, which area for, for example in, in our uh, like uh, company someone is uh, like uh, in that marketing he he wants to learn it programming but Uh, but you cannot be you no know, full fledged why you wanted to programming in the sense you wanted to do some kind of like little bit stuff uh, stuff like something like in that configuration changes or you want to do the simple web page so, so that you, you no need to depend on eh, our terms the same way happens to the designers in the designers they can uh, in, in the design they can create a simple html page they can share it to us so that we no need to depend on the uh, the 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 color code or part everything it is already there in the page itself like you no know? so but uh, so uh, you wanted to be learn in that and that stage uh, stage 2 like uh, stage 2 or stage 3 what uh, like uh, uh, kumaran calls it so they they no need to learn it programming for the stage 4 like so that is where they wanted to like even even i feel sometimes that and um when when i wanted to learn it in the in the machine learning in the in the past so i was uh, spending much more time on the machine learning where that is not my core competency so uh, after after a couple of months i realized that okay that, then i i just you know uh, started where um, stopped where i was then i was still learning it but step by step not uh, not in the i'm not focusing my all energy in that uh, area so this so. this brings me to another concept which i call as just in time learning right mm. which is mm. closer to what what the the application level thing is that you learn it when you need to apply it because if you try to learn it before you need to apply it the by the time you need to apply it you may have already forgotten about it so you have to relearn it when you need to apply it so so what do you think kumar about this just in time learning is it possible to do just in time learning <laughs> I, i think it's more a necessity and that's how you can do it now it's regard <laughs> whether it's a possibility you have to yeah so uh, i i think that is what most people end up doing isn't it just in time learning you have to. yeah correct yeah and i think we have to be specialists in it so there would be a so i think it's kind of interesting so if i just stick to my hyperhot terminology i think there is a green zone learning and a yellow zone learning mm -hmm. okay yellow zone learning is something like uh, you have to travel you're already in the station but you don't know where the booking counter is mm -hmm. so you're learning you're asking somebody figuring it out and getting that done that's what i call as a yellow zone learning you have no choice but to learn mm -hmm. then there's a green zone learning you know i feel like traveling to a location so i'm getting it even before i planned for my vacation so i think that's another aspect of learning green zone learning and yellow zone learning i think yellow zone learning somehow happens already i think it's yeah. like so you don't we don't have to invest you really don't have to plan for it because it happen by is, itself yeah it happens as you're sincere about your job yellow zone learning will happen right so, so there's no other way you yeah. can see so you have to get onto the train right so you have to learn where to buy the ticket exactly exactly so this i think this just in time learning is inbuilt into our system even yeah, you, you I don't, don't have to consciously need a plan or a strategy for i mean that's you just what don't i need think. a yeah right so i think this is this is a good point to sort of summarize the topic and and close the discussion i think we discussed what is the impact of learning why we should have it and and the different ways of learning and the and the uh, the, the kirkpatrick model which uh, kumaran brought in is is the main learning actually is re the retention of learning happens when you apply something and and that's the the, the stage 4 uh, uh level 4 uh, level of learning so so that, that and that is what everyone should strive for and 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 we all concluded that just in time learning actually happens all the time we don't really have to plan for it because 
if you don't do it, you will not do your job. So, so that is something which you are inbuilt into it. It's a green zone learning or the intentional learning where you want to apply it and, and do maybe do innovation based on that learning. That needs much more effort and conscious approach to do it. Right. So thank you, Venkat. Venkat is from EquaConnect. Uh, he's a CTO and a chief engineering officer, if I may call it. If I don't know whether that's a designation, but he, he leads the, the, the technical yeah. uh, engineering uh, organization of EquaConnect. Nishant is an architect with IBS software and Kumaran is uh, the chief mentor for Tiny Magic and CTO also. Uh, so thank you everyone for listening in and keep tuned in. We intend to keep coming back to you every two weeks. We may be here and there in terms of posting the edited or less edited videos, but uh, we try to be there posting every two weeks. Thank you and see you next time.